Back when GD first introduced the Cool Ray in late of 2019, it really captured a lot of people's attention, and I do mean a lot. And to this day, it's still a very popular choice for a subcompact crossover. But 2019, which may not seem like it, but it was a long time ago, and through the years, it's only received minor upgrades. Now, knowing that, GAC has decided to set its sight and take aim also at the subcompact crossover category with this, the GAC GS3 M Zoom R Style. And on this episode of Behind the Wheel, let's talk about the exterior, the interior, the engine, the ride and the drive, and find out much like the Cool Ray was in 2019, if it can be the next big thing. prices for your brand new car? Well then, visit autodeal.com.ph, select the car that you want, and choose to request for a quote from our network of over 500 official dealer partners nationwide. Within minutes, you'll start receiving offers from the dealers you've selected. All that's left is for you to select the deal that's best for you. Get the best deal on Autodeal. Okay, so the M Zoom actually starts at just 998,000 Philippine pesos. You heard that right for the GS variant. This top of the line R style comes in at 1,198,000 Philippine pesos. Now, for the top of the line variant, it comes in at a more affordable price than even the GD Cool Ray and others in the same category, such as the Chang'an CS35, the Honda HRV, and even the MG ZST by 888 pesos. If you don't believe me, head on over to autodeal.com.ph and try the comparison tool and see for yourself. Now, the overall look of the exterior of the M Zoom is really, well, there's no other way to put it except aggressive. And it really catches your attention in the best way possible. Up front, you have what GAC calls the flying wing front grille. And on this top of the line variant, you have orange accents on them. Down below, the orange accents continue on these wings as well. The lights are all LED with an auto high beam function. On the side, you cannot miss these really sharp 19-inch alloy wheels wrapped in 235-55 series tires, which are, by the way, Michelin Pilot Sports. A very, very nice touch. That's like a cheat code on its own. You get these nice cuts on the doors, minimal plastic cladding standard for a crossover nowadays. Now, hidden door handles, which are very cool, and then they pop open when you unlock the car and hide away when you drive off or when you lock the car. I like that. Roof rails can be found up on top, flanking the panoramic glass, which is very premium. And then the windows taper down towards the rear, emulating sort of like a coupe look. Further accentuating the coupe-like look of the automobile is this lip found at the rear, which is a very nice detail and wraps the car up very, very well. As does too, the spoiler could be the talk of the town, not for the best of reasons, but hey, I will say that it is very unique and really stands well with the rest of the automobile. To continue at the rear, you've got LED tail lights, which are sharp, and then they've got a black accent found all around. You've got diffusers found underneath, which look very, very cool, and a pair of exhausts, which, by the way, you can change the exhaust tune by a flip of the switch found inside. Very cool. And the reel. And the reel, yeah, Jack's really happy about that. Um, open Heimer up and you're looking at 341 liters of space. Not big enough for a Balik Bayan box when it's propped up, but definitely when it is laid out. Or you could fit two Barbie dream houses in there. Obviously, you're going to get a heck of a lot more space when you fold the backrest down and you will be able to fit Balik Bayan boxes because of the large openings and just put it in there. So possibly three Balik Bayan boxes, yeah. I think that should fit nicely. Let's get into the interior and talk about how comfortable, believe it or not, the headrests are. Strange, right, that I'd mentioned that the headrests are soft, but truly, they actually, actually are. They feel good when you lean back on them. For some strange reason, I think that these are the softest headrests that I've ever put my head up against. 
Now, Jack told me that if you think these headrests are soft, wait until you get up front. And I touch it right quickly here. And yeah, they are. But we're in the back seat. So um, the color here is not brown. It's not tan. It's called camel brown, to be very specific. I think that the color here actually works very well because of the exterior of the automobile. It's white. So I think this works well. Now, if the exterior of the car were dark, I'm not sure if this would actually work very well, but as it is, it does. The seats are very comfortable. The bolstering is actually very good, not in a sense that it feels intrusive at all. This is my normal driving position, not Jack's driving position, but look at the amount of space that I have. And then what adds to that is that there is absolutely no, so that's grass, absolutely no center tunnel which means that you can you can put three average size adults in here um, for quick jaunts inside the city, but per obviously better for, for, for two normal size adults. Uh, the room is great. You've got pockets up front. The headroom, even though that there's a panoramic uh, sunroof or rather panoramic glass, look at that. It's actually pretty decent. Now there is no real cover for the panoramic glass as I would have preferred, right? But since because it hasn't been all that sunny this July, uh, it's actually been very cool inside this automobile. Now, uh, more on the door, co more colors on the door because you've got your camel brown or lighter than camel brown actually on the door. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually white stripes on the door. Dun, 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 dun. No, not the band, but there are white stripes printed on the leather itself which I think is actually pretty cool. It's got like pinstripes on it, not white. We won't go there again. Ball holders on either door. Uh, center armrest with two cup holders, yes. And then there's a bit of a talking point here. There is only one, one USB charging point found down here. And then one very, very large vent, which doesn't really go well if you put two people back here that, well, don't really know each other very well. Because then they'd have to share and they wouldn't know how to share. They'd be like, Pare, baka nainitan ka ito, yung airfan para sa'yo. Dede, dede, pare, sa'yo na lang. Di naman ako lamigin. Dede, nagre-reklamo ko sa'yo init kanina. Sige, sa'yo na lang yan. Dere, hindi ko kailangan yan. Maikang koti lang yung body fat ko. Aba, sige, tignan natin kung patayo yung utong mo. Pero sige, lagi mo. Sige. Was that too much? Yeah, that was a bit too much. So like I said, the headrests of these uh, seats up front are really, really soft. It's like a nice marshmallow. It feels really good. Like you might even just fall asleep. Not the best thing if you're a driver, so, but they're really, really nice. Okay, let's start with the dash, which is actually very, very low. I like because it doesn't impede on your knees, your leg room at all. So they've designed it in such a manner that the dash is low, but you still have a lot of leg room. And what that does is that it gives you a really, really great view of the road. Plus the A-pillars are actually quite small. Even with the speakers that are DTS, by the way, here, the A-pillars themselves are actually pretty slim. I like that. To continue on with the rest of the automobile, it does have some piano blacks in some high touch areas like here and on the vents, but it's limited to just that area because down here, there are no piano blacks. It's just brushed aluminum and a plastic that actually feels good to the touch. There are accent lights inside this automobile that come on, on the door and around the air vents, which uh, it really makes the car look quite elegant when the lights do come on. Elegant too are the screens found in front of you. There is a seven inch instrument cluster, which is colored by the way, nice touch. And then a touch screen that is 10.25 inches as your infotainment that has Apple CarPlay and unfortunately no Android Auto. Why can't they just get along? It's cool also on this screen because you do have a reverse camera, a 360 degree view, but when you also indicate either to the right or to the left, the camera does turn on for those that are found on the side mirrors to help you with your blind spots. I like that. On the steering wheel, you've got a flat bottom steering wheel with buttons that will control your cruise and the functions of your screen directly in front of you. And then you've got your audio controls on your right hand side and also a button, like I mentioned earlier, that will change the exhaust note out back. Then you get into your driving position. Uh, you have electric seats for the driver, which is good. None for the passenger, but who cares? It's just Jack anyway. Uh, you sit comfortably, telescopic steering wheel, which is good. More stripes on the door, which is again, elegant like the lights because it continues from the rear. Um, the thing though that will get Jack, and I guess I myself, um, you do have controls that will lead you directly to the air, which nice. is nice, great. Unfortunately, there's no controls that will lead you directly to the audio system. Not so nice. 
But still, at least you can get your air and cool yourself off in hot days in the Philippines. Well, when it's summer, you know what I mean. I will add this before we go on a drive, that the engine and transmission of this automobile are the same that you will find inside an m Coup and an m Pow. However, Jack and I have come to the conclusion that it actually works better inside this automobile. And that I'd like to share with you as we go on this drive. But before we do, do consider subscribing to our channel because we create these videos just for you guys. Let me begin with a contradiction. You get into the automobile, you set off, and it's actually quite comfortable. It's very roomy inside the automobile. The seats have a nice color and feel to it. As I mentioned, this is actually very soft. Uh, the NVH is quite good. Not a lot of wind noise comes in, even when you're at speed. Not a lot of road noise comes in from the tires. It is, however, quite firm in the sense of the ride, the suspension itself. See, it leans towards more the sporty side. Now, while that isn't an issue for a lot of people out there, it's just that you may be shocked to see or rather feel that the car is very planted in the sense that, well, spry as I may like to think that I am, there might be some people out there that want a crossover that rides a little bit smoother. And if that's what you're looking for, then there are other options available for you. In this particular sense though, it just, it just matches how firm it is on the, on the ride to its exterior look because it's a very sporty feel. Not bouncy, mind you, by any means, no. Just that it's firm. Up front, you've got a 1.5 liter four-cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine that produces 174 horses and 270 newton meters of torque. So that's almost in the same realm, if not basically the same as that of a cool ray. In the city, you can do roughly about eight, eight and a half kilometers per liter, which is stellar, right? On the highway, the legs are a little bit better because we've been able to do about 16 and a half kilometers per liter. As for how the engine is, it can be tame if you drive it tamely enough, but once you switch it into the available drive modes for you, which is Sport and Sport Plus, it can definitely get quite racy. It's the transmission that is probably the biggest talking point about all of it because it is the same DCT as found, as mentioned, as the siblings of this automobile. Now, in those other automobiles, we have made mention that it could have been executed a little bit better. Here, for some strange reason, it just does feel like it's executed just ever so slightly better. It's still a little bit draggy in traffic in the sense that, well, you will sort of like jump on the brake quickly when you're stuck in traffic as you're trying to time the nuances of the car that it wants to move forward in traffic even if you don't step on the accelerator you're not really sure if it wants to leap immediately forward or if it's happy just tailing the car that's directly in front of you technologically it's very well equipped as well because it's got the ADAS system which is also found in the m -Coup, and it works very well considering that this automobile is priced as it is you get do you do get a lot of tech you can get racy with this automobile, especially when you put it in Sport and Sport Plus. The one miss though, I feel, is the fact that there are no paddles. I wish I had paddles so I could control the, uh, the changing of the gears a little bit longer to suit my needs and my taste. That's not to say that Sport or Sport Plus can't get racy on you. Oh yeah, definitely it does. And the steering tightens up too when you switch through those modes. It's just that, yeah, the paddles, I wish I had them, you know? Then my fingers wouldn't be so lonely. As we mentioned, the suspension can be a little bit stiff, um, a little bumpy for those that are unspry, like Jack and myself. But what that basically just means is that it feels more at home when you're attacking twisties such as we are right now than if, let's say, for example, you were on flat surfaces and just going straight. I'm not saying that the ride is bad by any means. No, not at all. It's just that the stiffer suspension means that it can attack these curves and it wants you to attack these curves and it wants to give you the confidence to say that, yeah, I'm going to stick to the road. 
An addition to having stiff suspension is that the body roll is actually quite minimum. It doesn't lean as much as you think, which means that you really feel like you're planted. Although the automobile does have its drawbacks, I'm not gonna deny that the drivetrain could use a little bit of help, but overall, it does have quite a few good points going for it. comes with the automobile is actually quite good. The interior and the exterior feel quite special really without looking obnoxious in any way whatsoever. I can even get in with the color scheme which if you think about it kind of reminds you of McLaren and I'm not just saying that because Lando took second place recently. Yeah to Jack's delight. And then there's the fact that the engine and transmission although we've seen before actually work better on this automobile. So back to the question, will it be the next big thing? Let me put it to you this way. When the Cool Ray came out, it was definitely the talk of the town because of what it offered at its price point. This, well, offers the same things in a better package. And then the kicker is, its price point is actually more affordable than what the Cool Ray is now. So will it be the next big thing? I don't wanna immediately say yes, but I will say that it definitely has the chops to do so. Mm -hmm.